The pathetic dumpster fire that was the 2021-2022 Lakers season mercifully limped to the finish line. But what hasn't ended is the insufferable exploits of the biggest prima donna in all of sports, the chosen one who destroyed the competitive balance of the sport for about a decade span in order to steal as many garbage championships as possible, is now sitting in the rubble of what was arguably the biggest underachieving season in sports history. Though Braun certainly didn't think so. Just listen to his exit press conference. It's not a failure. It's not like, uh, you know, we came together as a, as a team. We wanted to be as crazy as we can be. We just didn't accomplish a lot of the things that we... We would have hoped. Not a failure? For a guy who has absorbed plenty of failures through his career, from that gag job in 2011 to Delonte West getting nice with his mom and him quitting on the Cavaliers as a result, this is arguably the biggest failure yet. The Lakers team with five Hall of Famers on it to start the season did not make the playoffs. Check that. Did not make the play-in game. Check that. We're nearly 20 games under 500. Not a failure. Talk about a freezing cold take. But just let him tell you, it was all because of the injuries. 25 and 31 in 56 games that Braun played in this season. But he would still have you believe he is, quote, having the time of his life. Yeah, okay, Braun. Maybe Braun forgot to activate playoff mode this year. He certainly didn't forget to score as many meaningless points as possible or to take his strategic rest days with a, quote, ailing knee and ankle while conveniently dodging the better defensive teams the league had to offer and leading the NBA in field goal attempts per game. What he did forget to do was play any semblance of defense this year while on the way to generating a minus 117 in 56 games. That boils down to a minus two per game. Strive for greatness, Braun. But look, all of that won't stop the mass media from drooling all over this guy as usual. Memo to the horde of semi-illiterate, unemployed 22-year-olds living in your parents' basement and getting tough on Twitter who make up the vast majority of this guy's delusional fan base. This is why we can't stand this guy, and this is why we can't stand any of you either. That message goes double for the LeBron jock sniffers in the mass media. Cease and desist, Windhorse. Go away, Nick Wright. You can all come back full force when he reloads with some jacked super team that has absolutely no chance of losing, yet predictably finds a way to lose nonetheless. Cue Kyrie Irving trade rumors. When LeBron's flirting with Steph Curry fell flat on its face earlier this year. Who else do you want to play with? Um, in today's game, Steph Curry. Well, he got it. We, we got his wish. So he's the captain. He's picked me the last two uh, All Star games. So I don't know if that suffices, but I'm good right now. It was time to switch course to the next potential savior of LeBron's championship chances next season. That is, assuming, of course, Kyrie can even be bothered to play next year. Reteaming these two seems to be a match made in heaven, though. Two delusional egomaniacs who can't be bothered to face even a minuscule amount of adversity before slithering on their hands and knees out of town to the next best opportunity. If ever a tandem deserved one another, this is undeniably it. 